I'm Eddie Muller, welcoming you once again to my den of iniquity. Do you ever feel like you just need to bust out, adopt a new identity, and take revenge on all the people who've made your life a living hell? Well, you've come to the right place, because, hey, that's just another routine day in Noir Alley. Although there's nothing routine about the way that story is told in today's movie, Dark Passage. This 1947 release is the third of four movies co-starring real-life husband and wife Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. And it is, by far, the strangest. Now, it takes a special kind of producer, one with lots of guts and guile, to put a studio's hottest romantic duo in a picture together and not show the leading man's face for a big chunk of screen time. Now, that gutsy producer was Jerry Wald, who, after starting at Warner Brothers as a writer in the 1930s, worked himself up to become the most dynamic, creative, and prolific producer on the Burbank lot. He was riding high at this stage of his career, having produced pictures like Background to Danger, The Hard Way, and Objective Burma. But his biggest coup was reviving Joan Crawford's career with Mildred Pierce and Hugh Moresque, both big hits. And once a chemical fire was ignited with the casting of 19-year-old Lauren Bacall opposite 45-year-old Humphrey Bogart in To Have and Have Not and The Big Sleep, both of them produced and directed for Warners by Howard Hawks, Jerry Wald was determined to produce his own picture with the newlyweds, one that would outdo Hawks creatively and at the box office. To that end, he bought the rights to a novel, still in galley form, that had created lots of buzz when serialized in the Saturday Evening Post in 1946. Dark Passage was the second book by a young Philadelphia writer named David Goodis, but it was his first crack at a crime novel, and some enthusiastic reviewers touted him as heir apparent to the great Dashiell Hammett. Now, such comparisons no doubt spurred Jerry Wald's interest, since it was Hammett's classic, The Maltese Falcon, that helped propel Bogart to stardom just a few years earlier. And over the objections of more penny-pinching executives, Wald arranged to pay Goodis a hefty 25 grand for the film rights to Dark Passage, a tidy sum for a fledgling novelist. Wald then summoned the reclusive and eccentric writer to Hollywood, setting him up with an office on the Warner lot. Now, Wald and Goodis got on famously. In a rare twist, the producer actually encouraged the writer's ambition to create headier, more socially-minded stories, although Goodis's first assignment at the studio would be to craft an Americanized update of the Somerset Mom classic, The Letter, relocated to Los Angeles and released in 1947 as The Unfaithful. Now, the adaptation of Dark Passage was turned over to Delmer Daves, a former actor turned writer whose resourcefulness and reliability had earned him rare status as a writer-director at the studio. He'd recently written and directed The Very Thought of You, Destination Tokyo, and Pride of the Marines, all under Wald's guidance. While Wald wanted Daves to surpass Howard Hawks, he also hedged his bets by assigning him the same DP who'd shot To Have and Have Not and The Big Sleep, Sid Hickox. It was Daves, however, who came up with the daring solution to the plot's biggest hurdle, escaped convict Vincent Perry having his face altered by a back-alley plastic surgeon. Now, Dave's proposed that Hickok shoot the first part of the story from Perry's point of view, so we never see his face. Post-surgery removal of the bandages would finally reveal Bogart to the audience. I promise not to cut an ear off, honest. Now, studio boss Jack Warner flatly rejected that strategy, scoffing at the idea of paying Bogart top dollar to appear on camera for only two-thirds of the film. Same eyes. Same nose. Same hair. Huh. Everything else seems to be in a different place. Frustrated, Dave's complained about his predicament to his pal Robert Montgomery, who turned around and convinced the brass at MGM to let him shoot the entirety of his latest, The Lady in the Lake, with just this subjective camera technique. Well, it's testimony to the juice Jerry Wald had at his studio that Warner eventually relented. Dave's got the go-ahead to shoot the film on location in his hometown of San Francisco, using the camera eye technique for the film's first act. Now, for his part, Humphrey Bogart loved the idea 
of not being on the call sheet for a bunch of early scenes. The alternative was getting up at dawn for hours of makeup that would alter his face to make the plastic surgery switcheroo believable. A miserable idea considering that he and Bacall had just been married and the trip to San Francisco to shoot Dark Passage was essentially their all expenses paid honeymoon. The couple was ensconced atop Knob Hill at the famous Mark Hopkins Hotel and caused pandemonium whenever they appeared in public, whether it was to shoot scenes on the streets or party in the town's famous nightclubs. Well, we'll let you decide if Delmer Daves's crafty camera gimmick works. Co-starring the fabulous Agnes Moorhead in one of her Moorheadier roles, here are Bogey and Bacall at the height of their popularity, starring in David Goodis's Dark Passage. <laughs> 